Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Wednesday, May the 22nd, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, boxing is a young man's game. I think you see some people today still plying their trade. Roy Jones comes to mind, right? Years past their expiration date, uh, profiting off their name, a name they developed 15, 20 years ago. But understand, historically, some great fighters have understood that their time has passed in their early 30s. Right, I'm just going to name some names and when they retired. Understand, I consider each of these guys to have been great in their primes. Gene Fulmer walks away at 32. Carmen Basilio walks away at 34. Marvin Hagler walks away at 32. Terrible Terry Norris walks away at 31. Jack Dempsey, 32. Rocky Marciano, 32. Chris Eubank, and that's Chris Eubank's father, who was an excellent fighter. Chris Eubank walks away at 31. Right now, historically, that's when fighters realize that their past isn't their present that their best days are behind them. That's when they're in their early 30s. I know at heavyweight, it's a little bit different. I'll agree, heavyweights who don't rely on quickness and reflexes can last longer, right? I'll agree, you can be world-class at heavyweight at 38, 39, Luis Ortiz's age, um, Vladimir Klitschko's age, Right, I'll agree you're still viable and heavy. Understand, Dempsey, Marciano were a little bit small by heavyweight standards, and understand they'd be tiny compared to today's heavyweights. Right, but understand, outside of the heavyweight division, in other weight classes, you're an old man if you're in your mid 30s. Right? Great guys, guys at the top of the game, realize they're not themselves. The 27-year-old version of themselves would beat the 32-year-old version of themselves. And many guys, just based on pride, ego, the recognition of age, will walk away. So when I see an older fighter... And don't be fooled. Again, older fighters, anyone in my book over 32 years old, right? Who's not a heavyweight. When I see an older fighter like Hassan Endem, who's 35, right? Deciding to take on a young, aggressive lion, a guy who's going to be in his face, a guy who's not bashful, a guy gonna, who's going to be throwing power shots. A guy who's going to be hunting him down from the opening bell. And that's who Callum Smith is. When I hear about the fight, I say to myself, you've got to be kidding. Endem thinks he can win this? Right? 35-year-old against a guy who's still in his 20s. Folks, that's a recipe for disaster. Let's go one step further. Anytime I see an older fighter decide he's going to try out a new weight class, he's going to gain weight and move up in weight when he's in his mid-30s, right? The red flags are out for me. Now, you mean to tell me that Andem, who hasn't been looking good at middleweight, right? Revisit both. Ryota Murata fights. Right, Endem hasn't been looking good at middleweight. Now I'm hearing he's going to gain weight? To face Callum Smith in his weight class? 
Folks, that might work for Canelo, who's still in his 20s. Right? Who's been looking good in the ring? That doesn't work for a guy in his mid-30s who hasn't been looking good in the ring. Right? Understand, there was such a big outcry over the decision in the first Murata fight that they did it again. This time, Murata won the fight. Right? Those fights are hardly an endorsement for a supporter of Endems to think, you know what, why doesn't he gain weight and fight Callum Smith? Let's go one step further. Let's talk about what goes first in boxing, right? You should know some of these boxing truisms, right? From before I started following the sport, people would say, you know, the legs are the first to go, right? Power is the last to go. You see guys with punches who can hang around. All they have to do is hit you once and, you know, good night, Irene. Right? But the legs are the first to go. You'll notice, too, that certain fighters have different acts in their life. There was a time where you couldn't touch Muhammad Ali in the ring. There was a time where you couldn't touch Roy Jones in the ring. Had no idea, none whatsoever, whether Roy Jones could take a punch. Because Roy Jones wasn't getting hit with shots. Let me tell you what happened to both men. Ali goes from being untouchable to becoming a rope-a-doper who could only show flashes of his footwork. Right? Roy Jones started getting caught in fight after fight. Right? One of the scariest things I've seen in a boxing match was Roy Jones getting knocked out by Dennis Lebedev. Revisit that. Jones is out to the point where you're wondering whether Jones is ever going to wake up. Right, this is a guy who, again, went through years of his career. Years! Where you were saying, wow, I wonder if Roy could take a punch. You certainly didn't see anybody land a good shot on Roy in the 88 Olympics. Now suddenly, Roy's getting hit, Roy's getting stopped, another bad Roy Jones knocked knockout. And I'm talking about he's the guy getting knocked out. Is that Glenn Johnson fight? Right? That's scary. Right? So understand. The legs are the first to go, I would argue, given the way he's battered by Murata. That Endem's legs are gone already. Now you're talking about a guy whose legs have gone and he's fighting Callum Smith? Folks, how's he going to get away? Right? You think Callum Smith is going to see a 35-year-old guy in front of him who can't move? And Callum's going to what? Take it easy on him? You think Callum Smith is going to say, you know what? Here's a 35-year-old guy who can't move. Let me work behind a jab on my back foot. That's not going to happen. Callum Smith is going to be hunting and them down from the opening bell. Let's also be real too. Even fighters who don't get hit, as they age, as they get past a certain age, I would argue as they get past 32, their reflexes start to dim. Right? It's called father time. You know, Guys don't get hit in baseball, right? That's not a contact collision sport like boxing is. But yet you'll notice great hitters get to their mid-30s in baseball, which is highly statistical. You'll start noticing that on-base percentage or that batting average start to dip. This is without getting hit in the head, right? You get hit while you age. And I would argue your reflexes are going to dim that much more. Right? I'm telling you, if sluggers like Gene Fulmer and Marvin Hagler could figure that out, right? Guys who weren't bashful, guys who were in your face, mixing it up with you, 
If guys like that walked away at 32, that should tell you all you need to know about the reality of aging in boxing. Let's also talk about the visual. Now, I'm a guy who believes that there are certain situations in the sport where shorter guys have an advantage, right? A Mike Tyson, a Joe Fraser can get inside on you. Let's say you're a big guy. Suddenly, here's a dynamo with a punch. He's bobbing and weaving. He's right here, and he's roughing you up. Right? Dwight Braxton, if you remember him, light heavyweight champ. You're trying to throw punches. You can't throw punches straight because the guy is shorter than this. So you're looking down trying to throw punches and Mike Tyson's coming up with uppercuts, roughing you up, flushing you out of the back pocket, getting inside your reach, getting inside your jab. Think Joe Fraser Ali. Right? But a shorter guy who's a back foot guy, that's who Endem is. Right? He's 5'11 and a half. Now that worked at middleweight. Right? He's facing a guy who's 6'3, folks. You're going to notice the height gap at super middle. Right? A shorter guy who's trying to be smooth. Right? He's, he's the sweet guy. Right? He's trying to be smooth. He's you know, try to be fluid. That guy, especially when his reflexes are in decline and his age is advanced by boxing standards, that guy is going to have problems against a front foot heavy, big punch heavy, hook heavy young lion. Just picture the visual. The hunted's going to be end up. Right? He's the guy who's back foot and stuff like that. Now understand, Ali at 35 isn't back foot and smooth. Right? Endem's going to try to pull that off against Callum Smith, who's going to be on his front foot already. Callum Smith is on his front foot against front foot heavy fighters, folks. Here he has a guy who's going to try to be on his back foot, who's going to try to win the fight by decision. It's not going to happen. So put me among those who expects a big Callum Smith win. Right? This is one of those fights where you want to have some money on Callum Smith simply to win since that rate of return is low, as it should be. You want to also put some money on Callum Smith by KO. What you're really hoping to do is to break even if the fight goes the distance, and I don't think it will. And to make, you know, and Smith wins. And to make money. If Callum Smith wins by stoppage. Understand, Callum Smith wants some big fights. He's been mentioning people like Saul Alvarez. You have some other guys who, quite frankly, are too big for 160. Demetrius Andre comes to mind, right? Understand, as fighters get older, they can't yo-yo in weight as much. Right? Danny Jacobs didn't even try to make the second day weigh in, did he? Right? He blew that by what? Five pounds or something like that? As guys get bigger, as they grow older, you know they're going to have to leave their weight class. Right? Even Golovkin is talking about fighting at 168. Right? Golovkin, a slugger, is in his mid-30s. You should be vigilant with him in terms of comparing his fights to his prior fights to see if Father Time's catching up with him. I believe Father Time is caught up with Endem. I believe he's more of a name right now than a reality. I think he's going to have little chance. Little chance against Callum Smith. Right? I think Callum Smith, this is his moment. He's making a statement. He wants the big fights. Right? Canelo, Danny Jacobs. He, 
He wants to enter the sweepstakes. These guys get to 168. He wants to raise his hand and take on these guys. He wants to make a statement, and let's face it too, with him. 6'3", and you're weighing 168, how long's that going to last? So he realizes if he's going to continue to leave a legacy at 168, the time to do so is now. Because in a year or two, he's going to have to move. To Bivol's division, 175. Right, so I like Callum Smith big here. What I want to do is to encourage the public to make the case if they believe in Endem in the comment section of this YouTube video. I'm sure I'm going to hear about Bernard Hopkins and uh, a few outliers who were defensively blessed, who didn't rely on their back foot, who were able to age gracefully well into their 40s at weight classes outside of heavyweight. My point to you is men like that are few and far between. Right? They are outliers. Right? When you look at a guy like Endem and he's getting roughed up by Murata in two fights in a different weight class, middleweight, Right? You have to ask yourself if he's an outlier. Is he going to be the guy who gains weight and then says, oh, I was weight drained before, right? That's, <laughs> that's the story they always come up with when a guy gives a lackluster performance. They say, oh, he was weight drained before. Now with dessert, you know, now with extra food, extra carbs, he's going to be able to fight at 168. You know, it'd be great to find that out against lesser competition than Callum Smith, an unbeaten front foot heavy, heart punching young lion who just beat George Groves. But this is the deep, choppy end of the pool. And I quite frankly think Andem is going to drown. That's how I see it. I look forward to your counter arguments and comments. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.